Good evening everyone and welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. In this video I'm going to be showing you my meat rabbit breeding record log. So we raise on our homestead meat rabbits and angora rabbits and it's very helpful for me at least to have a record um, all in one place, all the litters, how many there were, all this information that is hard to remember especially when you have a lot of babies born. Um, so I'm going to show you how I record um, the things, what things I do record, what things I don't, um, and just sort of show you what I do. So I have a three ring binder, which I just taped a cover to so that I don't forget what's in it so I can easily see what it is. Rabbit breeding record, and I have a picture of cute little babies. I just taped it on because this one doesn't have like a little cover thing you can slide things in. Um, so, and then inside we have pockets with stuff that I just kind of keep that I might need to know. And then we have one page for each doe. So this is, I've organized them in order of oldest to youngest. So all the meat rabbits, oldest to youngest are in here. And then we have all the angoras after the meat rabbits, oldest to youngest. So Lolo, Peppermint, the next oldest, and we just keep going on and on and on. And then after the angoras, we have the records of our dead rabbits. So for Rosemary, she died, but she's Pepper and Henneman's mom, so I used to kind of still want to know what her litters were like, so in case I'm like deciding, oh, whose babies do I keep that I can look at their, not only their moms, but their grandmas too, so to see their, like, different litter sizes or how good they were of moms or stuff, so I do keep the, um, rabbits who have passed away, their records as well. So I got this rabbit breeding log printout PDF thing from Living Traditions Homestead, and you can get one here. Um, I use this as a kind of base thing of what I do, but I have added um, some things and changed a few things, um, just penciled in because the way they have set it up, um, I don't quite like everything about it. I do like several things about it, but um, I have tweaked a few things, so I'm going to show you what I tweaked and then just how it works. So I'm going to be using Rosemary's um, breeding log as a example. She um, passed away. But we do have kept two of her daughters, Peppermint and Henwin, and so she'll be a great example for what we do. So, at the top of the page, we have the rabbit breeding log printed there, which is nice. And then we have the name or cage number, and I wrote Rosemary. Sorry, this camera's a little bit blurry and bad, but that's the best we have. And then, so Rosemary is her name. If I had rabbits that had numbers instead of names, her, her number would be like 8 or 3 or whatever number she was. And then her DOB stands for date of birth. She was born May 15th, 2019. Then we have this graph thing with breed date, nest box date, expected kindle date, kindle date, number born alive, number born dead, rebreed date, wean date, butcher date. So I added an extra column over here. It's buck. So the buck they were bred with, I feel like that's kind of um, something to know because if I notice, oh look, each time she has bred with basil, she has six kits. But whenever she's bred with barlow, she has eight. So barlow must produce more kits than basil, so we can keep barlow and sell basil. Kind of like that. But if I didn't know which buck was which that she bred with, it'd be hard for me to tell that. So I've added myself a little extra column here with the buck she was bred to. And because our meat rabbits are in a colony setup, it's kind of hard to know what date they were bred. I mean, when they're born, you can count back and kind of guess which day they were bred. So, but if we happen to catch a breeding, like with Sayla, we saw her give birth and then she got bred the same day. So we know her breed date, but all, a lot of the times we don't know when they were bred. So um, we have the breed date there, which is optional, but I haven't really found that super necessary, but sometimes it is nice to have that there. Also, because we have colony set up, we don't need to put nest boxes in. They are just there all the time, so nest box date is kind of unnecessary. And then same thing with expected Kindle date. Uh, if we don't know when they were bred, we don't know exactly when they're going to have babies. So, And also, if I do happen to note that, I'm going to write that in my actual calendar because I look at that and I don't really look at this unless I'm filling in babies who are born or if I'm looking up something special. So I don't check this all the time. I check it every once in a while, so I find it just easier to put... Um, that type of information in my actual calendar that I check often. And then the Kindle date, which is Kindle means give birth, um, is very important because then you know how old your babies are um, and then you can count back, hey, if they Kindled this day, then 30 to 35 
ish days before that they were bred so then if they're bred the same day then probably like a month later we'll have more babies kind of like that so that's very important now we come to number born alive and number born dead i don't like born alive and born dead i like i don't know like the wording it just is like born dead i mean like a lot of the times i have babies who none of them are born dead but then one or two die when they're little so i either put so i like right up here i'll write or when little but it just the wording kind of throws me off i'm just like i know for myself number number born alive means number that served like was born either born alive or is still living until they were supposed to be butchered because obviously they're going to be most of them are going to be butchered so they're not all going to be alive now but so the ones who are alive and then the ones who died when they were born or when they were little also i think it'd be nice if they changed born alive to born dead to be the number of kids born total and then the number that died i don't know if it's just me but i'd prefer to see instead of having to add up oh 11 plus 1 means they had 12 total and stuff i just see 12 and then however many died and then do the that means they had this many left in my head so i don't know if that's just me but i kind of don't like that setup right as much and then they have the rebreed date so we don't know when our does are rebred because they're in a colony and then it kind of doesn't make much sense to me if you have the breed date and the rebreed date so i guess if you're filling this out you put rebred this day and then you put the same date right there for the next line um so i don't know why they did that but that's all right so the weaning date i like to go by each litter is kind of different their mom gives birth different times um for us whenever their mom gives birth to another litter that's when they're weaned and then we leave them in there for a few more days just to make sure and then we take them out so we don't really need the weaning date because we kind of go by what the mom does and how they're good they're eating solid food so we don't really need that there and then butcher date is blank because we butcher by weight and not age so different litters different moms different dads um different times of year in the summer they're eating a lot of grass in the winter they're eating a lot of feed so they grow differently so it goes more by weight whenever they reach five pounds so we don't go by how old they are we go by how much they weigh so there are definitely a lot of things i would change about this but there's some things that i really like and it just is a lot of work to like make one of these your own so i would just use theirs it's really easy you just downloaded it i think and then yeah so now i'm going to show you how i fill out low low she just had a litter so i'm going to show you how i fill that out and this sticky note is just um kind of details about one litter that i wanted to remember so i'll just move that aside so lolo is her name she was born february 2017 so the buck she was bred to is barlow so we'll write barlow there and then the date she was bred we don't really need know that so we're gonna leave that blank nest box date we don't need expected kindle date we do not need kindle date actual kindle date right here is let's see what is today today is december so d e c dash 15 for the 15th 20 for 2020 and then five for born alive zero born dead i'll come back later if one happens to die i'll scratch this out and make it four and make it one and stuff that is kind of hard but you know because if you had a whole thing where it's like total and then two died then you would like leave this blank until they were like old enough to be butchered and then you do that but that's right that's how they did it so that's okay and then rebreed date i don't know when the, she was rebred i didn't witness it so i'm just gonna leave that blank weaning date we don't need to know because we go by each litter is different butcher date we don't need to know because we go by weight and not by age so basically we just filled out when she gave birth how many she had and how many died so yeah so if I were designing my own rabbit breeding log, I would put the buck and then the breeding date, kindle date, born total, died, and then that'd be all. All right, then I also have a binder where I write all the details of each litter. So this is Sayla and Barlow's litter. I have the date they were born, the mom and dad, how many were born, how many survived, the colors. Um, she built a good nest and then abandoned them and then readopted them and just all the stuff, important stuff, and just little details in case I'm like, hmm, 
which baby do I want to pick? And then I can look at all the moms, all their details, all the litters, if I notice patterns, huh? She always loses two, whereas she always loses one, so I better keep a daughter from her instead of her, because she loses less. Or just that type of stuff that it's not in the log, but I kind of want to know that, because it's kind of important, but it's a lot to write down. So I just have notebook, all the notes, very nice and easy. So yeah, that is the easy way I keep track of all my rabbits and their litters. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!